If you've ever started to join the pieces that you've cut for your quilt block and they haven't gone together right, it could be a problem with your cutting. Accurate cutting is foundation for getting an accurate quilt block. So today I'm gonna to give you 15 tips for using your rotary cutter and ruler. Welcome to Eva to Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. Accurate cutting is foundational for getting a quilt block that goes together easily and accurately. If your pieces aren't the right size, it is going to be a big challenge to get them to go together. So today I'm going to share 15 tips for helping you use your rotary cutter, get used to it, and be able to cut more accurately. The first step is to make sure that your fabric is pressed. If your fabric has creases and folds while you're cutting it, there's no way you can fix that. If you are cutting complex pieces like triangles, a bit of starch will be helpful too. Cut with the grain of the fabric. Open the fabric up and then hold the two selvage edges together but so that it is loose at the bottom and then gradually move the selvages back and forth until you can find the part where it hangs smoothly. Use the largest cutting mat that you can afford and have space to store flat. If your cutting mat is 24 inches or longer, that will be great because you'll only have to fold your fabric in half once to be able to cut strips the width of the fabric. If you don't have space for a cutting mat that large, however, that's not a problem. You can still use a smaller cutting mat successfully. You'll just need to take a little bit more care. Make sure your ruler aligns with the fold of the fabric, not necessarily the selvage. In a perfect world, everything is perfectly square and the fold and selvage will be parallel. But sometimes this isn't the case. If your mat is small, you will have to fold your fabric twice and cut four layers at a time. This is not a problem, but now you have two folds. Make sure they are parallel to each other and use those lines to line up your ruler. Use only one ruler as much as possible. There are hundreds of different quilting rulers available, but if you are only cutting strips, squares, and rectangles, then you really only need a rectangular ruler. If you have rulers from different manufacturers, there might be tiny variations between them, so as much as possible, use one ruler for your project. Also, if you're using the same ruler, you will get used to it and be able to read it easily. If you try different ones, you'll quickly find your favorite one that you go to over and over. When you're measuring pieces, use the lines on the ruler, not the lines on the mat. There are some exceptions to this rule for large pieces, but in general, use the ruler lines to measure. This will be more accurate, and it also means you can cut anywhere in any direction on your mat. Cutting in different places will help your mat last longer because it won't get big grooves in it. Before cutting, become familiar with your ruler and what all the different lines are. Most quilting rulers have marks down to an eighth of an inch. Becoming familiar with your ruler will help you cut with confidence. This ruler has hash marks marking the eighth inch intervals. You can see that the quarter inch marks are a little bit longer and the half inch mark is a lot longer. It also has yellow lines which mark the quarter inches. This ruler also has hash marks marking eighth inch lines. The quarter inch lines are longer, but for half an inch, it has a dotted line that goes across the whole length of the ruler. If you are struggling to find the right spot on your ruler, feel free to mark that line with tape. Putting tape close to that line will help your eye be able to find it right away. To hold your ruler, tent your fingers 
and have some fingers on your ruler and some off on your mat. If you need extra support, you can always add a weight, like a light exercise weight or a can. When you're cutting, be sure to hold the rotary cutter straight up and down and not at an angle. Cut with one sm firm, smooth motion. Don't saw back and forth. Be sure to use a sharp blade. Once you're having trouble getting through the layers of fabric, you know it's past time to replace it. There are some things you can do to sharpen your rotary blades and that will extend their life a little bit, but eventually you will need to replace it. When you're done cutting your strip, always close your blade. Make sure it's closed any time you set it down. And when you're done cutting, lock your blade for extra safety. You don't have to talk to very many quilters before you start hearing the rotary cutter horror stories. If you have arthritis or another condition that makes it hard to open and close your blade, you can get rotary cutters that automatically open when you push it and they automatically close when you lift it. And that would be a really worthwhile investment. Last tip, when you're finished with your rotary cutter blade, make sure you dispose of it properly. Don't put these into general household waste that will go into the landfill because that can be really dangerous. Check with your local area to see what's recommended for disposal and try and dispose of them with sharps waste. Once you've learned all these tips, your cutting will only get better with practice. Of course, the biggest piece of advice that applies to anything you're doing, measure twice, cut once. For more quilting tips, tutorials, and patterns, be sure to check out my website, evitastudio.com. Mm -hmm.